Hello everyone, so this is my first video in a long time and I wanted to make it about free speech and censorship. So basically, I'm going to try to make this video a little bit shorter. Um, basically, the traditional argument for free speech is similar to, for example, Elon Musk's ideology where, and Mark Zuckerberg's, where there shouldn't be an arbiter of truth. Um, if there is a central authority, whether it be a company or a government, deciding what the truth is, then that will and censoring misinformation, then that will lead, that is the road to serfdom, the path to tyranny, or whatever. And um, free speech is preserved by having an open and free space where pretty much anything is allowed. You know, besides like obscenity and stuff like that. So... My argument, now I looked up to see if anyone has made this argument before because everyone always has, and there was a book written, I'm looking, I'm pulling it up right now, the article about it, called This Is Not Propaganda by Peter Pomerantsev. And basically, I'll, I'll read the beginning of this article because it's pretty much what my position is. So, modern propaganda is a lot harder to discern, Pomerantsev says, because we rarely know who created it and for what purpose. The global playbook is for regimes, actually democratic regimes as much as non-democratic ones, to use different methods of drowning out their critics. They do this in different ways. They can just hire troll farms, or they can incite online mobs, or they can hire out cyber militias through proxy business interests. And then here's the key part. People are fed an onslaught of information, misinformation, and conspiracy theories until it becomes almost impossible to separate fact from fiction or trace an idea back to its source. And, and then the article goes on. This is a quote from the author. Back in the Cold War, whether it was the Soviets or the Ferdinand Marcos regime in the Philippines, it was pretty clear who were the agents of censorship and intimidation. It was the military police or the Secret Service. Now it's not so clear. You'll never prove that it's actually directly related to the government. Or some other nefarious third party. So basically, my idea is the vision of a tyrannical government controlling its citizens, controlling, controlling the information sphere of its country, traditionally, because of what we've seen in history, it's always been centralized. Like the government just... Like, like North Korea. The government just saying, you can't say that. And the government directly censoring. And, um, and the military police directly going after specific journalists who say certain things. But I think that there's a new form of danger. A new f threat to free speech that operates the opposite way... And our ideology, our traditions, our laws just isn't equipped to deal with this new reality. And basically, if you have if you have freedom of speech, but it's drowned out by noise and misinformation, then it's not really, you're not going to get the benefit, the whole point of free speech. You're not going to reap the benefits of having free speech in your society if the truth is silenced. 
Now, uh, <laughs> sorry, I lost my place in my head. Um, basically, it's not just about the change in culture. It's about the change in technology. We're talking specifically about the internet here, mainly. And that's because the internet allows for a new medium for speech that has different traits than usual. So if you look at what the internet allows people to do, this is the key thing, guys. The key, the key thing, if you don't take anything else away from this video, the internet allows people to isolate their infosphere from from anything else and basically believe whatever they want because you can have you have communities and algorithms that focus the person's exposure okay and that is much harder to do with literal speech as existed in the 1700s for example so basically the idea this is okay the whole the whole ben, the, the whole idea of free speech is based on one fundamental assumption that i think is made incorrect by the internet okay the the assumption is this that Good arguments and good ideas and truthful things will beat out false and correct things in the marketplace of ideas through debate and conflict and confrontation. So basically, the idea is that if everyone is allowed to voice their opinions, the correct or best opinion will eventually come out on top because the arguments will be sound. And that's what all these free speech advocates are chasing is being able to have a marketplace of ideas, so to speak, which is what the phrase that Elon Musk used. And I think that that is what the Internet can take away. Because with physical speech or, uh, sorry, I lost my place again, but um, if you are on a, on the floor of Congress, for example, and people are speaking freely and you're arguing about something, then it, de it depends whether or not the rational argument will come out on top. It really does depend on a lot of things. So the assumption is already not always true in non-internet spaces. It's not always true, right? I mean, Nazi racial theory took over Germany by marketplace of ideas and you know like the the free open expression like Weimar didn't just censor them right Weimar so so you have to remember first of all that chasing this whole like marketplace of ideas freedom of thought let people decide on their own mentality can have its failures even in the old times but on the internet, you can isolate yourself into an echo chamber. You can be completely not exposed. And also, this is the this is the thing. I think that fundamentally, people believe what they want to believe. Most people. And what that does is, it means that you will use your your technology to reaffirm the things that you want to believe 
And one example, I mean, the example that I'm thinking of in my head is, for example, the 2020 election, where if you don't, if you fundamentally don't want to accept that somebody lost, you are able to isolate yourself in a sphere where what the truth is, is not clear. So basically, there's no way to rational argument away a sophisticated, organized misinformation campaign. It just, especially not with the internet. It just doesn't work. So the old way of promoting free thought and and rational arguments, there just isn't a space for where those rational arguments take place. And instead what happens is people start believing whatever they want to believe, which makes people polarized because they're going to start believing... They already, they're already different. Like, the, like you think about the culture wars. They're already different. And if they start believing in different realities, then that can get really bad. It increases division. So, just the concept that if you have freedom of speech, you will have more rational people or more people that live in reality. I just don't think that that's necessarily true on Twitter, for example. And we see in places like Russia, from what I understand from, I'm pretty sure this author was writing about Russia. The article doesn't say, but, um, you can what you want what you can do as a as an as a tyrant is flood the infosphere with so much crap that people either become isolated in it and join the echo chambers or people just say well i don't know what's true or there's a lot of uncertainty so just by flooding the airwaves with a bullshit argument you can create doubt, so doubt and confusion. And there is no, there's no place, especially not Twitter, where these ideas clash. And there's, the only place is court, right? The courts, you think about court. Now they do allow for arguments to present themselves and they do weigh the arguments. And that's why, for example, in the 2020 election, one side lost every single court battle because courts use arguments. They they use free speech for how it's supposed to be used. But that doesn't happen on Twitter. And it's a lot easier to spread the misinformation. Like, you know, the, the, the thing is, um, like, like, lies spread much faster than the truth. And it takes no effort to make a bullshit argument and it costs it costs no resources to make a bullshit argument and it costs resources to disprove the bullshit argument so the bullshit argument's always going to have an advantage unless you have some kind of system with rules and well unless you have some kind of system with rules like how our courts work So, basically, the idea that you achieve free speech by censoring nothing, or, yeah, by censoring nothing, is, in my opinion, outdated. And you can't actually, you won't get the same end result anymore. It doesn't matter if the ideals are the same. I have the same ideals, but the, the reality... What actually, literally, physically happens is there's a lot more shit than there is truth, and ideas spread quickly. And as soon as it's a bad idea or a dangerous idea, 
like that your entire government stole an election from you, then you might be led to go attack your own Congress. Because there was no, there was no place where people were weighing arguments in a sterile environment. And so the question is, where do you go from there, though? Because once you say, okay, okay, so if you just allow censorship through noise, where it's censorship through drowning out, censorship through flooding airwaves, what do you do about it? And um, first of all, I don't know. That's the main thing, because, yeah, I don't know. Um, Because if you have the state do it, then you've already failed. That's the whole thing you're trying to prevent in the first place. Is for the state to, to take control, to sow doubt in the truth of its failures and actions. Like, Russia can convince its people of, or they can make their people doubt almost anything. So they don't make all the Russians believe that Ukrainians are Nazis by censoring the truth. What they do is, or what they could, (laughs) um, you, you flood the airwaves to sow doubt and make it a, a question in people's minds. So you just, quite simply, you just say Ukrainians are Nazis over and over and over and over. And eventually more and more people, if they don't believe it, then they at least have doubt about it or don't know for sure if it's true. And then you can say, well, we don't directly censor the press. I mean, you know, you're allowed to say that Ukrainians aren't Nazis in Russia. Well, <laughs> it might be different now with wartime rules. I am i haven't researched that. but Because once there's a war involved, like even the United States in World War One banned anti-war uh, speech. So it's not that unusual for the state to do it during wartime. But anyways, the point is that I don't think... Okay, so we were moving to what what you can do about it. Basically, you need to establish... You have to... You have to link the truth sayers, like, for example, judges, if you ask them about the 2020 election, the judges and the experts, basically, have to have a, an amplified mouthpiece. So, during COVID, you have to amplify what epidemiologists are saying, because they're the ones who study it for a living, and I've been trying to figure out what to do forever. And that doesn't mean that you have to have censorship, okay? For example, Sweden had epidemiologists arguing that perhaps lockdowns weren't the best way to deal with the virus, and Sweden had no lockdown. For the virus. And they lost a lot of old people. But you know. So and that was an epidemiologist. So you don't have to. Silence. See. You don't have to silence good ideas. You just have to silence. Totally unsubstantiated bullshit. You do. You just do. Because otherwise the bullshit will win. But. If you, 
and and what's funny is you know platforms in a lot of ways are already do this but you make people no longer trust the authorities if you allow too much bullshit so it should be what experts say qualified experts obviously has to be trusted and I think that if you amplify it enough it can help a lot so for example if one person makes a makes a statement about um, COVID being fake or something and then the CDC says something else it's not just or, you know, if, okay, if two experts are disagreeing, then it is something that's up in the air. But usually, that's not what happens with these kinds of things. You're not going to find people, you're not going to find a judge who's going to sit there and and spout what Sidney Powell spouted. You're just not. So, um, there has to be a little bit of technocratic structure in how the spaces are moderated. And then you try to make sure that the organizations that have rules remain not corrupt so for example like there needs to be a cost to making statements so that if you are if you are if you are trying to tell an unsubstantiated lie it can't be so easy and free to spread that. And also, I'm, I do not think that the state can, should be the one to do this. It has to be the platform uh, owners, platform moderators. So, you know, at most, you could have something like something indirect like the Fed, but that even that I think would be tyranny or yeah, basically. So the whole point of this is to stop the government from being able to um, manipulate the beliefs of its citizens. And Governments used to do it by spending great cost to directly censor, but you can also do it by sowing doubt in everything so that nobody trusts the truth. And then you can do whatever you want and there will be two sides to the argument or whatever. Um... And I really, really think that a lot of very powerful people like Elon Musk, they just don't understand that. Like, they just don't. They just don't. You have to have some kind of... Some kind of quality of moderation. And the best way to do that is by, like, a third-party committee, you know? So, like, the board of... The old board of Twitter or something. Because... There... Well, I suppose it's not necessary for... Um, for, uh... 
a third party to to necessarily control it because you don't necessarily need to be so direct with moderation because there's no real way to take away people's ability to create echo chambers without also um without also taking away their rights or infringing on their rights but somebody smarter than me i can't think of a solution <laughs> But somebody smarter than me has to figure out how to stop the malicious sowing of doubt in order to cloud the truth or make people no longer believe in the truth and using that also and, and then using that maliciously. And I think that like, yeah, like the Internet just makes it worse. All right, cool.